Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at the properties of particles which is found in the particles and radiation topic for AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson what we're going to do is we're going to try to define and describe particles and their properties. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson we'll describe the different types of particles found in the universe, list the basic properties of particles and convert and calculate the different property values of particles which links into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, the constituents of the atom. Now, there are here are the following ways any particle in the universe can be described as. It can be described by its energy mass, its charge, its spin, its strangeness, its lepton number, and its baryon number. Now, there are only two properties which you've come across at GCSE, the charge of a particle and the energy slash mass of a particle. Now, the baryon number, lepton number, strangeness are all ways we can describe a particle and we'll look at what each term means in upcoming lessons. Now just to note, spin is a concept covered at degree level only. So there are six different properties which we can describe particles as, with their energy and mass, their charge or specific charge, their baryon number, their lepton number, their spin and their strangeness. Now there are different descript these are the different descriptors we can use to differentiate between different particles. So in today's lesson, we're going to focus predominantly on the mass and the specific charge of particles. So for example, we can describe the proton with the following properties. We can look at its energy slash mass, which is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Its charge, which is 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Its specific charge, which is 9.57 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. Its baryon number, which is 1. Its lepton number, which is 0 its spin, which is a half, and its strangers, which is zero. So the first uh, property we're going to look at is the mass. Now, one method of differentiating between particles is by measuring their mass. However, we find the SI unit of mass, the kilogram, to be very difficult to work in, because on the scale of kilograms, any particle mass is going to be very, very small. Instead, we use the mass-energy equation to derive a more workable unit for particle masses. So the unit of mass most common commonly used by particle physicists is called the MEV over C squared, but it's not an SI unit, but it does give a nice workable number in terms of particles. So the MEV over C squared is an easier unit of mass to mathematically manipulate. However, if we wish to determine another SI unit, joules from it, it must be converted back to kilograms. So this is the derivation of how we can convert between MEV over C squared and kilograms. So so because we know energy is equal to mass times by the speed of light squared, therefore mass is equal to energy over the speed of light squared. Now we know 1 MeV is 1 times 10 to the 6 mega times by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So therefore 1 MeV is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. So therefore we pop this into the equation and say 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13 over 3 times 10 to the 8 squared because C is 3 times 10 to the 8, that gives us 1 MeV over C squared. So this tells us that the conversion factor between the two is 1 MeV over C squared is 1.78 times 10 to the minus 30 kilograms. Now another unit of mass which, which is used by particle physicists is the atomic, ma uh, atomic mass unit, which is the unit of particle mass used in GCSE. Now one unified atomic mass unit is approximately the mass of one nucleon, either a proton or or a neutron. So it's defined as 1 12th of the mass of an unbound neutral atom of carbon 12. So we know that 1u, which is the atomic mass unit, is equal to 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Okay, but it's not an SI unit. Now to convert from non-SI, either MeV over C squared and U into SI kilograms, you must multiply by the conversion factor. So if you were asked to convert 17 MeV over C squared into kilograms, yeah, what you would do is you'd multiply the value of the MeV over C squared by the conversion factor. So the conversion factor is 1.78 times 10 to the minus 30. So you do 17 times by 1.78 
times 10 to the minus 30, which is 3.03 times 10 to the minus 29 kilograms. You could be asked, what is for you in kilograms? So again, you look at your conversion factor, 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. You then multiply this by the value of you you've got. So you would do four times by 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27. So we get 6.644 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Now note, MEV over C squared are the units of mass when we're using the formula E equals MC squared, whilst um, the U are the simplified units of mass which we've used in previous topics. So like a GCSE, we said protons have a mass of one and neutrons have a mass of one. That was in fact U, atomic mass units. Now to convert from SI into non-SI units, you must divide by the conversion factor. So what is two times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms in MEV over C squared? Well, this time you would divide by the conversion factor. So it's two times by 10 to the minus 29 over 1.78 times 10 to the minus 30 is equal to 11.2 MEV over C squared. Or you could be asked, what is four times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms in U? So you do four times 10 to the minus 27 divided by the conversion factor, 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27. So we get our answer of 24.1 U. Now, previously at GCSE, we had stated in terms of charge that particles were either positive, neutral, or negative. So they had a plus one, minus one, or zero. There was no unit to this. This was the relative charge of the object. But this is an approximation because we must place the charge in units so it's no longer relative. So we must express the charge in terms of coulombs, the SI derived unit of charge. So previously, while well, so the proton had a charge of plus one and the electron minus one and the neutron zero, now we've got to give our values in actual coulombs. Now, one unit of relative charge is equal to 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So a proton has a charge of plus one relatively, but 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. An electron has a charge of minus one relatively, but it's got a charge of minus 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And obviously a neutron has zero charge either relatively or in coulombs. And you should memorize this value forward for your going forward for your understanding. Now, for particles, we find a much more useful part, uh, quantity of the particle to be the charge to mass ratio. Now, we call this the specific charge of the particle. Now, we think we find this a more useful quantity because it influences the particle's behavior. So, the specific charge details how much a particle is deflected when it's in an electrical field. The larger the specific charge, the greater the deflection. The the lower the specific charge, the smaller the deflection. And if the object has no specific charge, it will not deflect in an electrical field. And it's the same idea for a magnetic field. So the specific charge will tell you how much a particle is deflected when it is in a magnetic field. The larger the specific charge, the greater the deflection. The smaller the specific charge, the lower the deflection. And if the object has no specific charge, it will not deflect. So for particles, we find a much more useful quantity to be the charge to mass ratio of the particle, which we call the specific charge of the particle. This is because it influences particle behavior. So we can calculate the specific charge with the equation specific charge is equal to charge divided by mass. Now in physics, specific means per kilogram or per unit mass. So in specific, a specific charge of a particle indicates how much it will deflect in an electrical or magnetic field. The larger the specific charge of a particle, the greater the deflection of the particle in that electrical or magnetic field. Now just to note, this equation is not given to you in your examination. You've got to memorize this particular examination equation. So the specific charge we can calculate by doing overall charge in coulombs divided by the mass in kilograms. This tells us our units are coulombs per kilogram and it can be calculated for particles such as the proton or ions such as the mg2 plus ion. So for example, how do you work out the specific charge of the proton? Well, you work out the charge in coulombs, which you put on the top, you then divide by the mass in kilograms, and then you get your answer out. So in this case, it would be 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27, which gives us 9.58 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. So here's an example calculation to work out specific charge. A nucleus of, of 1H has a charge of 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and a mass of 1.6 times 10 to the 
10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Calculate the specific charge. Now remember for a nucleus, the mass includes both the protons and the neutrons. So the charge will need to be in coulombs, the mass needs to be in kilograms, and you work it through as such. Now, a specific charge is a scalar quantity, so you don't, in fact, need to include a minus signal. Now, we can also do a question for specific charge on an ion. Now, an ion of a magnesium isotope 24 mg has a charge of 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and a mass of 3.98 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. Calculate the specific charge. So for an ion, Remember, the mass includes both the protons and the neutrons, but you don't need to add the electron masses in there as it will not affect the answer when you give it to the correct number sig figs. But remember to give your charge in coulombs and your mass in kilograms. So remember, if Mg2 plus has an overall relative charge of 2 plus, this means its charge in coulombs is 2 times by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, which is 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19. So that's an important idea. Now, as ions contain neutrons, which contribute to the mass but not the charge, the specific charge of an ion is much smaller than that of a charged particle. So what have we learnt in today's lesson? We should understand the charge and mass of the proton, neutron and electron in SI units and in relative units. We should know that the atomic mass unit is included both here and in the nuclear physics section. We should know the specific charge of the proton and the electron and of nuclei and of ions and we can hopefully use notations such as proton number and nucleon number to help achieve this. So if we've been successful in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the different types of particles found in the universe, list the basic properties of particles, and convert and calculate the different property values of the particles. So thank you very much for listening to today's lesson on particle properties, which is part of the particles and radiation topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.